I guess first things first, how has it been coming back from cloud 159 over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, no, it's been nice. Um, it's kind of a back to reality. Obviously, we were in our bubble for so long. Um, but yeah, obviously coming back now, being back at Chelsea, it just kind of feels like you haven't been away. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been really nice and been nice to be around the girls again and to get ready going into the season. And have you had any time off? Did you get a little tiny mini holiday after the tournament? Yeah, so I disappeared pretty much qu quite quickly. Um, within like two days, I was off on holiday. I went away with my family. So it was really nice, really chilled, um, what I needed just to switch off and yeah, enjoy some time with them and to really digest the summer and but more in a civilized way rather than a digest in terms of going out and getting drunk every day yeah um but yeah no it was really really nice and then i came back and yeah it was still a little bit crazy and then obviously now it started to like calm down and focus has changed to the wsl so yeah i, I disappeared quite quickly after just to kind of like get away from it all so that was nice yeah that's what i was thinking because having been in such a a close bubble with your teammates and becoming basically family for a very intense month is it quite weird coming home and then being like oh I've got my dogs but where are all my where are all these people I've spent a whole over a month with is, is it quite lonely um it's it's a, it's a not too bad to be fair but I'm I'm a bit more probably I wouldn't say antisocial compared more, to more introverted yeah, yeah I think so and I think you know I wasn't someone that was always needing to be around people you know you have some people that feed off other people's energy to get energy and obviously that's just the the perfect thing of having different characters in that environment you have some who like to be very outgoing you have some that maybe a little bit more introverted and yeah obviously I, I came home and it was a bit strange to be fair like coming home and little things which is going to sound absolutely ridiculous when I say it but making your own breakfast mm. for example you know I got in and there was no food in the house there was no drink in the house there was nothing and I was a bit like okay I need to go to the store then <laughs> and actually buy some food for once so yeah like little things like that it just kind of like brings you back into that reality and that way that you know you're away from the bubble and being away from everyone but you know it's it's great to see what some of the girls have been doing in terms of what they've been experiencing the memories that they're going to make and yeah it was just, just super cool to be a part of and yeah I'm just happy for everyone and what's it been like for you as well I was talking to Erin and she was saying she went to a restaurant with Sam and Millie and Millie got bombarded with autograph requests and and people want to take pictures what's it been like for you since the tournament happened to be fair, no, to be fair, it hasn't been too bad. Um, I went away on holiday and I, I seen when I walked in the lobby, you know, there was quite people a few were. people like, <laughs> oh my God, like, um, so yeah, I had a couple of people on holiday. I actually ended up going to the same hotel as Jess and Anne. Okay. Um, so everyone was like recognizing me and then they'd recognize Jess or they'd recognize Jess and then me. So yeah, I mean, it was, it was a bit crazy on holiday to be fair, but since I've come back, yeah, no, I've kind of stayed away from a lot of places um, in terms of like just being back in training and stuff so it hasn't really been too bad for me at the moment but I'm sure you know when the league starts up again and you know there'll be more and more interest um, it's going to happen probably more um, not just with the English girls either probably you know with everyone. And have you I guess found as well that loads more media requests and have you found also you're getting more kind of like brand and sponsorship offers as well? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's gone a bit crazy, um, but it's been really cool, you know, to see, like I said, what some of the girls are doing and where they're at. I, I decided to kind of like take a step back from it all. Um, and obviously when I went on holiday, I was like speaking to my agent or, you know, my friends. And I was like, look, I just need to get away for one week and just like we can deal with, you know, whatever comes our way after that. But I think it's really important as a player to take that break when it's needed. And obviously, you know, I've had my experience with it when it hasn't gone great for me in terms of I've done too much maybe so you know I, I kind of had to put that on the back burner a bit which obviously some people found a bit crazy because obviously the time was then and now with women's football in terms of you know the, the popularity of it straight after the tournament but I've learned from previous that I needed to take that, st that step away and focus on getting myself fresh rather than you know driving up here there and everywhere for media requests but you know so for some people it works and that's what they get energy from so it's all about the individual in terms of how they feel but yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure that you know I've got a couple of things coming up which I'm really excited about. That's amazing and, and I know you, you're not going to be involved in the in the coming England um, camp we've got a slight injury how's that looking ahead of the new season? Yeah no it, it will be fine um, you know, I picked up a little knock during the Euros um, in the second game so I was managing that during the Euros and managing the pain and, and everything like that um, but then obviously you know the cures that you get to get through one game in the Euros is not sustainable to get through a whole season so you know I, I, I felt and the club felt and England also felt at the time you know once I had the scan they were like look 
take this time that you need to and get yourself ready and it gives me another you know two weeks to get myself fit to get the pain level down as much as possible and yeah I mean it should be fine it's, it's nothing too serious it's you know it's just something that's a bit irritable at the moment and just need to calm it down to make sure you know that I'm fully firing for the season and hopefully you know for the rest of the games with England. Yeah I was going to say as well you've got that big game at Stamford Bridge on the 11th of September do you think you'll you'll make it in time for that one? Yeah I should do yeah was, obviously as everything goes to plan now obviously you know, you never know with the manager's decision if you're going to play or not. But I think, you know, I'm hopeful that I'll be ready for selection. You know, I've done some individual training so far and it's felt really good. So hopefully, you know, after the international break, I would have done, you know, a good solid 10 days of training and, you know, not just training, but fitness work as well, which I think I, I needed. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really hopeful for the game and hopefully, you know, I can play a part in it. And since the tournament ended, two massive characters and personalities in that England group have announced their retirement, Ellen White and Jill Scott. Firstly, how much have they impacted and influenced your career over the years? Massively. You know, I've been part of the journey along with Jill, um, Ellen as well. And, you know, they're just such great people. You know, when you lose two players like that, it's, you know, it's really sad and it's really tough to take. But I think the way that they conducted themselves throughout the Euros, well, conducted themselves throughout their whole career, um, but especially that Euros, um, when they probably knew it was going to be their last one, and to be able to handle them emotions, to handle everything, the pressures that come with it. You know, Ellen is judged based on the goals she scores, but as soon as maybe she doesn't score for one game, people are calling for her to be out. And I'm like, you don't understand like what this girl does for the game and what she does for every team. You know, her work rate is incredible. And Jill, people say she's only in there because of her personality. No, she's a quality player. She came in to games when we needed her and she did her job. You know, she's not someone that tries to do anything crazy. She does her job and she does it really well. So I think it's a massive credit to how they conducted themselves with everything going on around them. Um, two fantastic players and two fantastic people. And I'm going to really miss having them around at camp and, you know, not just camp in general, but in women's football in general. I think they've been massive trailblazers for the game. They started when you know, probably there wasn't any professional football and the journey that they've been on to help the team grow, to help women's football grow, you know, no one can ever take players, people like that for granted. And I think they'll both be massive losses for the game. Yeah, how how, how big a shoes are those to fill? I mean, oh, how, you can't. Yeah. You can't, you can't fill the shoes. You can't, you know, I think obviously it's a lot easier now to say for back then, you know, what these players had to go through to become professional footballers, you know. And now, you know, obviously it's great because we have this opportunity now where 17, 18 year olds are signing pro deals. They're training full time. You've got to think when, you know, when I was 17, 18, I was having to get up at five o'clock in the morning to go to the gym and then work nine till five and then go to training in the evening. You know, they had to do it for more years than, you know, than I had to go through. So I have so much respect for them in terms of their journey, in terms of how, they have matured into the people that they are and the players that they are and I think everyone needs to remember where the women's game has come from in terms of these players who sacrifice so much to allow the game to be where it is now for us to be here today to do a media thing you know when I first joined Chelsea it was a tiny little interview with a you know makeshift camera um, and I think that's all because of these players that have come through and built this legacy and I'm just so glad that they managed to do it with a with a major trophy for England at the end. Yeah I was going to say you've obviously got a World Cup on the horizon and, and that group there's so many more exciting things to look forward to but how pleased with you and almost relieved I guess that players like that finally got that that medal to show for it because we've obviously seen Anita Asante and Farrah Williams already retire and it feels like such a shame they never got that moment but it's so great to see players like that actually have that physical thing to hold. Yeah it's incredible and it's fully fully deserved for the years like I said that they've put into the women's game and to themselves and I think for me for them to go out that way it's just such a fitting way to do it and you know I, I still believe that their quality is enough to continue playing but you do know as a player, you, you feel it as a player, you feel the emotions and, you know, for them to be able to do it off winning a Euros, I don't think there's much better time to do it. And uh, Lauren was saying that for her this season, Champions League is the big target. She hasn't won nearly as much as you have. Um, you've won everything with Chelsea now. So what is the big target this season for you? Yeah, I mean, for me, I want to win trophies. You know, of course, I, I want to sit here and say that I want to win the Champions League and I've said that all along, but ultimately I want to win trophies with this team. And 
for me, obviously, the Champions League now is the one that we don't have and the one that we're going to be really, really trying for. But, you know, obviously I was part of the team that got to the final and I was absolutely devastated and I was really, really down about it because, you know, obviously you don't get a chance to play in a final of Champions League often. Um, but the more I look back on it now, I'm like, I'm really proud that we got there and we achieved what we did. Um, so for me now, the Champions League is the one that we want to get. And I would love nothing more to do it than with an English club and with Chelsea, um, just because I've been here for so long. And to be able to do it with, you know, a country that you're from, you know, it gives me, you know, really big motivation. So hopefully we can do that. But for me, winning trophies, regardless, is the most important thing.